Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. My name is Miss Robinson and I am back with another math tutorial video for you guys. So today we're looking at Lesson 5.5 and in Lesson 5.5 we're going to be dividing decimals by decimals. This is another investigate lesson so we're going to be using models to help us understand the concept of what is happening when you divide a decimal by a decimal and why when you divide a decimal by a decimal will you get a whole number even though you're dealing with decimals. So we're going to be looking at that and finding that out through the use of two examples that I give you guys for your homework tonight if that's what, the, what you're using this video for you are going to have to use models in order to complete it um, if you're just looking at this as a review for a quiz or a test you obviously don't have to use the model but this is just to help you to understand the concept of what's happening when you're dividing a decimal by a decimal so I'm going to set up my whiteboard give you a couple of examples and then we will come back with some closing thoughts so I'll see you in a few seconds in this example that we're going to go through together, we are dividing 3 and 6 tenths, and we're going to be dividing that by 3 tenths. So what this is telling you, you have 3 and 6 tenths of something. It could be 3 and 6 tenths of ribbon, uh, 3 and 6 tenths of wood, and you're trying to figure out how many groups of 3 tenths can you create. So the first thing that I think is the most helpful for you to do is to look at your divisor and recognize what place value position that goes up to and that will determine or help you to know how should I model my dividend. So I know that this is modeled in tenths which means that I need to model three and six tenths worth of tenths. Based on what I know from previous chapters, I know that there are 10 tenths in one hole. And since there are three holes here, I know that that's going to mean I'm going to be drawing out a total of 30 tenths to represent my three holes, plus another six tenths to represent the fact that it's three and six tenths. So that's what I'm going to start by doing first, is I'm just going to draw out 36 tenths. So I'm going to do this really, really quickly. So, I have modeled out 36 tenths because I am putting my items, whether it's pieces of wood, ribbon, whatever the case may be, I want to see how many groups of 3 tenths can I create from that. So that's step one. Step two is, you're just going to start pulling 3 tenths at a time and do that as many times as you can until you run out of tenths pieces. So I'm going to create my first group of three tenths over here. And you know what? Let me get a different color. Hold on one second. So I'm going to create my groups using red. So I'm going to create my first group of three tenths. One, two, three. I'm going to cross out three over here. One, two, three. Second group of three tenths. One, two, three. Cross those out. Third group, one, two, three, cross those out. And I'm going to keep repeating this process until I've run out of tenths. So one, two, three, 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 one, two, three. One, two, three. And that's my last group of three tenths. One, two, three. And one, two, three. So now that I've done that, I need to say, okay, well, how many groups of three tenths was I able to create? So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I was able to create twelve groups of three tenths when I had a total of three and six tenths or 36 tenths, depending on how you look at it. So that tells me my quotient to three and six tenths would be 12. Now, some of you may wonder, well, how is it that your division problem of three and six tenths divided by three tenths ends up being a whole number and ends up being larger than either one of your, um, then larger than your dividend and your divisor? Well, because this 12 represents just the number of groups I was able to create that were composed of 3 tenths from the total of 3 and 6 tenths. 
So that means I was able to make 12 groups. And the example where this problem came from in class, I think it was a person that had three and six tenths yards of fabric and she was going to be making bags that needed three tenths of a yard. And the question was, well, how many bags would she be able to create? And this tells you that she was going to be able to create 12 bags. So that is how you divide a decimal by a decimal using models. Okay, my second example, to be quite honest, is going to be a little iffy because I thought I had some graph paper to show this to you guys a little bit better, but I don't. Um, but I do want to try just in case it's, it's something that someone needs to see. So in this example, you're dividing 1 and 75 hundredths and you're dividing that by 25 hundredths to see how many groups of 25 hundredths would I be able to create if I had a total of one and 75 hundredths. So what I have tried to show for you is what your model would look like if you were using models from class. So this would represent one whole or 100 hundredths colored in. And then this one represents a whole, but only 75 hundredths are colored in. That's what this is supposed to be if that's not clear. Um, once you have that modeled, you guys will be provided with graph paper to do this, but I just happen to not have it. Um, once you have that model, you're looking to see, well, how many do I need in each group? And this is telling me that you want to create groups of 25 hundredths. So if these were real pieces of graph paper, what I would be doing is I would be cutting 25 hundredths. I'd be doing that as many times as I could, making sure that I have exactly 25 hundredths in the little section that I cut out or trace out to figure out how many groups can I create of 25 hundredths when given a total of one and 75 hundredths. And when you do that, if I had graph paper to show you, what would end up happening is that you would find out that you would be able to do that a total of seven times. You would be able to create seven groups of 25 hundredths from your models if you had one and 75 hundredths to start and you were told that you could only have 25 hundredths in each group. So my apologies that I don't have the graph paper and I can't show that to you a little bit better, but I wanted to at least be able to give you a verbal explanation so that should you have a problem that deals in hundredths, you don't get overwhelmed and say, oh my God, what am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do that? So. That is the second example. We also did this example in class, so you should have some kind of visual image of what we did together in class if you're a student. And if you're a parent, hopefully that made some sense to you. So I'm gonna flip my camera back around and give you my closing thoughts for this lesson. All right, now that I've given you some examples on how to divide a decimal by a decimal, hopefully you understand why when you are working with two decimals and dividing them, your answer actually comes out as a whole number. So my biggest tip that I would take away from this video is the first thing that you wanna do, make sure you know your dividend from your divisor and whatever place value position your divisor is being expressed in, that's how you're gonna wanna model out your dividend. So if you're dividing by tenths, in the problem, such as the one that we had that was three and six tenths divided by three tenths, it's easiest just to model your three and six tenths as tenths because that's how you will be dividing them. Um, so that would be the biggest thing that I take away from this. It will make your life a little bit easier. So as always, I hope this video was helpful to you if you're a student and you if you are a parent. If it was, please give it a thumbs up so that I know that. And I will see you guys in the next one. Have a good one, everybody. Bye.